A landscape engineer was a specific role on the uh, Olympic Park uh, where I was in charge of a team of engineers and it was our job to deliver the design intent which was produced by the landscape architects um, and take that through all the various stages, planning, construction, tender etc and through to completion. And a major part of that job was the coordination of all the works with all the other venues so it is a highly complex task. This was an a very important project for landscape because I think it showed the world really what landscape architects can do and the Olympic Park especially because it was led by landscape architects from master planning all the way through to, to construction um, even as I say in the construction during the construction and detailed design process where we as landscape architects were leading a team of engineers and I think you just have to really look at the reaction to the park um, when we were actually working on the project, it was interesting because pe people tended to talk about the buildings. They talked about the stadium, the velodrome and all these other, you know, fantastic buildings. But as soon as the park emerged and the park opened, then everybody talked about the park. And I think what that really tells you is how important it is, in pe certainly in the public's mind. And the reaction from the public was overwhelming, really, and the whole you know, positive reaction from the media and from, from fellow professionals. So I think really the, the message is this is what landscape architecture can, can do and this is, this is the difference that we can make as, as landscape architects. One of the great things about the Olympic um, Park was the fact it was such a, a collaboration between not only landscape architects but specialists as well such as soil experts, meadow planting experts and all these different, different groups and people. I think since the Olympics we've realised that Projects these days are, are highly complex. You need experts, you need people who understand a little bit more about each subject area to deliver it. And I think we've probably made our teams much more um, holistic, if you like, in terms of what they can do. Um, but the important thing is that, that we as landscape architects are leading those, those teams. I think the landscape architect is a, is a very good, well-trained person to have a, an overview of, of the direction of the projects and the quality of the end product. But I think we need support from you know, specialists um, and I think since the Olympics I would say that we've just really broadened our team and broadened the scope of, of specialisms to, to really bring quality into, into the work that we do. I think it was quite a, a landmark game changing project uh, and I think you know, the traditionally people think landscape architects come along at the end and put some trees in and I think here people could see landscape architects were there right at the start thinking about the project, planning it pulling together the master plan, pulling together the concept design, the scheme design um, and taking the project all the way through to the, to the final completion and I don't think any other profession could have done it to the same quality um, as landscape architects. LDA Design uh, partnered with Hargraves Associates and uh, we were the design team leader, uh, master planner and landscape architect for the uh, Olympic Park for the Games and also we had the commission to do a transformation subsequently which actually after the games doubled the size of the green space in the park. I think that firstly it has raised the whole profile of landscape uh, as an influencing factor in development, in branding and creating place um, and particularly influential therefore in our relationships with architects and other design fields. I think that the whole legacy side of uh, the Olympics has been incredibly important because actually what it's finally done is cement the whole point about long-term planning and uh, giving consideration to the future uh, in a way that is very very hard to communicate to others and which is very important to us because time is so important in landscapes they need to develop over a longer period of time and I think uh, uh, another key component is a change in attitude towards design which is design almost as part of a process because we would moved from games into the transformation of the Olympic Park into legacy and it will continue to evolve. And I think that understanding that actually you don't just design something on and off, particularly in, in landscape architecture, but actually there's a sort of fundamental understanding that these things evolve and develop over time um, in the way that we've had a new pleasure gardens in the south, the play area in the north. Um, you know, legacy will bring a whole series of different activities going on and change the place. That, I think, those are kind of some really, really important high-level issues uh, in terms of how that's communicated, I think, to the world and to our fellow professionals. The, the project is an energy project. 
uh, at its heart. It's a piece of infrastructure. Our approach to infrastructure, though, is to kind of turn that on its head. So what we're interested in is the regeneration opportunities, how we can create special places, how we can create valuable leisure facilities, how we can create a tourist destination, a new piece of public realm. And that's how we've presented something which essentially is about energy generation. Now, for us, uh, those things that I was talking about, long-term planning, and the understanding of long-term planning and the explanation of long-term planning, which we explained through our experience of the Olympics, was incredibly valuable in helping our client understand what our objectives were and what their value was. And I think our whole leadership uh, experience of the Olympics, the challenges of leadership in a very complex project, large teams dealing with incredibly complex policy and physical issues, were incredibly influential in our ability to lead that project. So we led the DCO, the Development Consenting Order process, which is a you know, very high level planning process. We're landscape architects. We were heavily involved in the planning negotiations. We're landscape architects. We were taking major roles in environmental impact assessment. We were setting out a vision for the uh, design and operation of an energy facility. We're landscape architects. And so as landscape architects, we were taking a major leadership role in that whole project so we were looking at everything in the project and I think our experience and particularly the confidence we gained from doing those very complex things on the Olympics has really had a significant influence in us being able to lead and deliver that project. I think that uh, the evolving confidence which is an acceptance and a realization of the importance of landscape and our confidence because we know we can deliver it and because we can lead these complex teams both in design terms and project terms I think and, the, and this exhibition that I'm standing in demonstrates the sophistication and the ability and the evolution of the profession during my lifetime and uh, I am very very optimistic about its future. Atkins as a company uh, started the enabling works in 2006. Uh, we then had a number of contracts for infrastructure and the element I was looking after was the landscape engineering of the North Park and then subsequently the uh, supervision of the landscape in the South Park. So I worked on it for four years. Some of my colleagues are still there. So earlier this week they were doing some work on it. So it's been nine years, nine, ten years now. When I went to the Games, I was walking around and overheard some people saying, I don't know what all the fuss is about, this is lovely. I thought this was supposed to be a horrible and derelict area. So I think that's the legacy that we've left. We, we've made a fantastic mark on what was a derelict area of London, but being landscape architects, nobody knows we've been there. So that probably means we've done it properly. Not being rude to my engineering colleagues, I work for an engineering company. Left to their own devices, it would have been a very different looking park. Um, so we came in uh, to soften their work or their proposals, and it's something we're continuing to do. So we, we've just completed um, some work for Hampstead uh, Pond, Swing Ponds. Again, a big engineering project, it's a dam basically, but it's been led by landscape architects. So that's one of the legacies, I think, from the Olympic method of working. The biggest impact is the collaborative working. Um, obviously, it was a very tight deadline. There was lots of issues and we just had to get on with it, uh, both within our company and with other companies. So I think the biggest impact is uh, the camaraderie um, that we developed, which we've taken onto other projects. And we keep bumping into people that also worked on the Olympics or other consultants that we are still working with on other similar large-scale uh, infrastructure projects. I've been with Atkins a long time. I went there for a year in 1984 and I haven't got out. Um, so a lot of my work has been with engineers and I enjoy working with them and they do listen to us. I think it's something they don't quite understand, a little bit mystical. Uh, and they kind of leave us to our own devices and uh, are quite keen to get involved with what we do and help us do, do what we're doing.